Hi, this is the Dirty Deal. Uh, this is my first redstone farm tutorial thing. Uh, so <clears throat> the lays came out in 1.19 and I was keen to use them in my world but I uh, quickly discovered that there weren't really any um, sorting systems that I could find specifically for uh, bedrock edition that worked really well for me. So I came to my redstone testing world and decided I would give it a shot. I kind of played around with the LAs a bit to see if I could get an understanding of how they worked and what things would uh, impede them and what things uh, would work. Uh, so anyway, after a day or two of messing around with things, uh, I've come up with a sorting system that appears to work 100% of the time. Um, this should work for all editions of uh, Bedrock Edition. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look in this chest. We can see what items you need. So you're going to need 21 uh, solid blocks. and You can use glass blocks if you want to see into where the LA is and be able to uh, uh, make sure that it's throwing things the right way. Um, and this is for... So I guess that's too many, but uh, either way, this is for the uh, the actual holding cell, and then this line is for the clock that runs everything. You also need 11 items of any type, as long as they're all the same item, uh, that will uh, power the hopper clock. It's basically ether hop etho hopper clock. Uh, so the amount of space that you'll need, uh, it's six blocks wide, and I believe it was eight blocks deep, uh, maybe nine, I guess it's eight if you don't want to include this uh, lever here. All right, this lever will turn off the hopper clock. Uh, you can also just build a, a comparator uh, stopper in here, just uh, when this chest is full you can power the uh, hopper or the piston, whichever and uh, turn off the system. Okay, uh, so I guess without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started building this. Uh, I'll go ahead and get these items here in my inventory. All right, so to start off, we're gonna do three blocks high, three blocks out. So you got yourself a nice little nine by nine wall here. We're going to repeat this over here. Okay. Then we're going to dig a little trench here. This is where obviously it ends. Um, and we're just going to put our chests in here. Then going to put your slabs on top of those hoppers. That just helps uh, restrict how far down the LA can fly. Uh, I found that without the uh, slabs there, the LA could fly down a little bit too low and it was just causing some issues. Um, all right, we'll put a temporary block here. This is where the dispenser is going to go. Pop it in. I want to put in a fence gate. This helps to ensure that all of the items drop straight down. Uh, so this I, this hopper here is going to be your unwanted items chest, essentially. Uh, this side is going to be your sorted items chest. Okay, uh, so from there we're going to put a slab here. And again, this is just to help make sure that the items go straight down. You don't want any uh, unwanted items going into your sorted chest. Uh, this also seems to keep the LA, if we look over here, having this uh, slab here and the fence gate here seems to keep the LA hanging out just right here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an, a pathing problem, uh, but it's still able to respond to the note block. And because it stays here, it's always throwing the items in the spot that uh, they need to be in order to be picked up properly. Um, okay. So from there, what we can do is put in our target block. 
this is target blocks kind of optional. There are different ways that you can run the redstone to power this dropper. Um, so you can put it um, or you cannot put it uh, whichever you'd like. You can leave it just like this if you'd prefer. Uh, I think it kind of looks nice with the, the target block there, so I decided to leave it. All right, from here, we're going to put our note block. Um, if you're only building a single one of these, you don't really need these wool blocks on either side. Uh, it is tileable, so if you want to do a second cell uh, or more cells, you'll want to make sure that you have wool between each cell so that your lay is only honing in on its assigned uh, note block. So we're going to do it without the uh, wool for the time being. Uh, and then again, you can use pretty much any solid block you want right here. Uh, I just like how the gold block sounds. And you know, you can see right there, that's why we put our wool. So that is uh, pretty much it for the holding cell, uh, aside from getting the front in there. All right, so that is uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the holding cell. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it does seem to work. All right, so we're gonna put these back in our chest here, and we'll go ahead and grab the items we need for the uh, hopper clock. So the hopper clock, um, what I tend to do is I just take a one block gap here, and we are going to put down our hoppers. And uh, if you know how this works, you know how it works. If you don't, uh, you know, feel free to look up some videos. I'm not going to take the time to really explain it thoroughly. Um, and this is, you know, basically an Etho Hopper clock. I didn't invent this. It's been out for uh, quite a while. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and just pop that right there. Uh, so to power this. I, I don't want the note block going off all that often. Um, so the way that this works is that this note block is going to be triggered basically every other time that the dropper is triggered. So to power the dropper here, we're going to take an observer looking at that piston. And we're going to throw a block on top of it and run a line out here. Then take your redstone and run it out to the target block. Again, you can change this um, just about however you'd like. If you want, uh, you can extend this one more over and run your redstone directly to the dropper. If you're, you know, more constrained on space, you can do this. You can throw in a repeater. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do here to get the power to the dropper. It's uh, not you know, really stringent on how this is wired up, uh, but having the observer definitely helps with uh, the timing. Um, all right, then for the note block, we're going to have our second observer looking at this redstone dust. Now with the, the timing of this, this redstone dust will turn off and then turn back on. Uh, it'll be just a, a quick pulse. Uh, the problem with that is that it causes the redstone line, right? This observer gets activated twice. Uh, I don't personally like that, so I use a repeater here on full delay, uh, and that negates that double triggering. So instead of having uh, two instances, it just goes once. Uh, so we can put all these back in here. And then as far as the timing goes, I've found that 11 items works really well. Uh, it seems to be just the right amount of delay that the LA, no uh, rhyming intended here, is able to always grab the item that it's supposed to be sorting uh, and we don't run into the issue of it occasionally missing stuff. Uh, so I'll just go ahead 
<clears throat> go ahead and give a quick demonstration here. We'll grab uh, an LA egg and uh, why don't we grab some oak and something that looks really different. Okay, oxidized the copper stairs. That's a mouthful. All right. So you'll want to have just like a little spot here where you can get in. One of the conveniences here is that you can actually swap items uh, for the LA. At pretty much any time, you can just drop down and, and take what it's holding and give it something else if you've changed your mind on what it should be sorting. So it now has its item, uh, and we'll just do a we'll just do a quick little test here. Uh, I'm not going to do a full stack because that you know that takes a while. This is kind of a, a slow a slow sorter um, if you're just doing one. All right, so we'll go ahead and watch this. So you can see the LA just kind of chills here for the most part and always throws the item at the note block. Uh, it seems to have uh, pick up priority over the hoppers. Uh, so you're never going to have to worry about it missing it unless your uh, timer is uh, too fast. Depending on where you're playing this, if you're playing it on a realm multiplayer server or something like that, it may be a you may need to tweak the uh, timing here, but 11 seems to work in a uh, in a solo world. Uh, now, as you can see, whenever we get uh, stairs, because of this fence gate and this slab, the item pretty much just drops straight down, which is fantastic. Uh, some earlier versions I was testing with used uh, different items here, and I was having issues with the items occasionally dropping over here. If it dropped them straight down, it was often an item that caused problems with the LA. Um, so this seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, it doesn't seem that, that I've tested with this setup. It's worked 100% of the time. Um, yeah, and it looks like we've just finished. So we'll see here. We've got the 10 oxidized cut copper stairs in our throwaway chest. And we've got our 10 oak wood planks in our sorting chest. Um, one other thing of note, uh, if you want, you can take this whole clock and flip it over on the other side. Um, there's not really any hard requirements on where this is. As long as you can make it work in your in your area, then you know you can put it just about wherever you want, whether it's on the side or on the back or front. It, it, you know it'll all work. Uh, I do recommend putting it on either the front or the back if you're going to tile this. The system is tileable. Um, you can see this is one of the earlier iterations where I was testing with dripstone, uh, but the tileability of it uh, remains the same. So if you want to tile, uh, you'll definitely need to use your wool blocks here. Uh, and then what you'll do is just shave the glass or whatever block you were using off of one side or the other of your uh, cell, your holding cell, and throw in a one wide dropper elevator. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials on how to make dropper elevators, and I'm sure that there are plenty on how to make a one wide dropper elevator. Um, I was too lazy at the time to bother looking one up, so I just came up with this design. Um, you know, feel free to to look at it, to use it. I'm not going to try and claim it because somebody has probably already built this before. Um, but I'll just give a quick little demonstration how it works. Uh, so you can see see it in action, uh, and all of the items are getting spat out over here. Or, well, I guess they're getting sent into here. I don't have it turned on at the moment. Um, but you can see all of the items will make it into this dropper. And when it's running, when the actual farm is running, or the sorter is running, um, then you know these items will be dropped into the next cell. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, the LAs seem to have a uh, really long range for picking up their, their filter item. Uh, and they can pick it up through solid blocks. Um, so when it drops here, 
sometimes the LA will go ahead and pick it up through the wall and throw it. Um, kind of strange behavior, but, uh, you know, if you want to sort, if you want to make the uh, sorter faster, then technically you can tile this and just have like two or three or four doing the uh, filtering out the same item. Uh, and then as it goes along, each one will be grabbing it through the wall. Uh, and that way you just overall achieve a faster, a faster sort. But yeah, uh, so you just put your dropper elevator here and then build your next cell. And, uh, you know, then you would just, you know, rinse and repeat. If you wanted to have another one, you just put your dropper elevator right here and then your cell there and a dropper elevator and continue on that way. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that has been, uh, I don't know, interesting, useful. Uh, hopefully somebody will enjoy it. They'll be able to use it in their world. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's it. I uh, hope it works well for you. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas to modify it or make it more compact uh, or you know, whatever in the comments. Thanks.